Hey guys, welcome back to the second time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's quick video, we are going to have a look at the RDNA 3 AMD announcement and what it means for mining. If you like the GPU content, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a great deal. But enough of that, let's jump into the content. Now, in case you guys are not aware, yesterday or the 3rd of November, AMD announced their RDNA 3 GPUs, or at least two models within their lineup. And by looking up the numbering, it is the higher tier AMD GPUs. Now, as much as I love supporting the underdog, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's nice to see a bit of competition between AMD and Nvidia, and hopefully, you know, that ultimately is good for consumers like you and me and the prices actually come down for GPUs and you can actually see that in the GPU pricing on the AMD front. Now looking at the two GPUs that they announced they announced a 7900 XTX and a 7900 XT so those were the two models that they announced. From a mining perspective the big thing is both of these models has got a GDDR6 uh, but the most exciting thing is they've got a bigger bandwidth. So they got bigger buses. So they've got a 320 bit bus and a 384, I think, if I remember correctly. But, um, you know, I've been mainly looking at the 7900 XTX. But the good news is they are away from the 256 bit bus that you would have found on this 6800 XT and the 6900 XT. And on top of that, the 6900 950 XT so all of them had the same memory bus so what we are getting from a mining perspective is we are getting bigger buses and we are still unfortunately getting the same memory but that's not necessarily a bad thing because from a heat perspective and from a power consumption perspective GDDR6 runs a lot cooler and uses a lot less energy compared to GDDR6X that you would find in the NVIDIA GPUs. Now, looking at it from a availability perspective and a cost perspective, the two things that you need to look out for is they will become available on the 13th of December and they would cost a thousand dollars more or less for the 6900 XTX, so the top model at least at this stage, um, and the 6900 XT would actually be a hundred dollars less, so that will come in at nine hundred dollars. Now, from a pricing perspective, taking MSRP into account, a 4090 is a thousand six hundred dollars, so you can see see there at least you know from a cost perspective there's a massive difference between the 4090 and the 6900 XTX. Now this cost difference looking at it from a gaming perspective and I've put my gaming hat on as I do play games as well besides mining is um, you know $600 off but by the looks of AMD's own numbers and again you know they would typically prop up their own numbers or at least show the best numbers that they can from a ray tracing perspective it's not going to be close um, you know the Nvidia cards is still going to be the best cards at least the 4090 from a ray tracing perspective and uh, for me personally I don't play that many single player games where I actually switch on ray tracing so it's not a massive thing and you know to be honest I've got a 6800 XT um, you know in my GPU upstairs so um, you know with that I haven't even switched on ray tracing but if I did have a 3080 I don't think I would have done it in any way the only exception to that is as soon as I would have played any um, you know uh, single player games and it supports it that's probably where I would have switched that on but I prefer smooth fast gameplay over anything else but um, you know that's where I see the big difference and on top of that there's a couple of features that AMD still are missing from a gamer's perspective so um, you know that's why you know even though the pricing is good don't get me wrong um, you know to some sort of extent it's a little bit justifiable um, I don't see the 6900 XTX beating out the 4090 either from a ray tracing perspective or a rasterization perspective. The 4090 is just an absolute beast. The amount of teraflops that it has, the big bus, the fast memory, there's a lot of tick boxes that the 4090 ticks. So, uh, however, the 6900 XTX is going to get very, very, very close to the 4090 and it's great that you know for maybe five or ten percent less performance you save yourself six hundred dollars so that's the big thing that i'm excited for now let's be honest you didn't click on this video to get my perspective on a gaming performance of the 6900 xtx so let's jump on the computer and i'll show you what i think or at least my projections from a mining performance what we can expect of the 6900 xtx 
Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now, the first thing that I wanted to do is just go over the specs a little bit. And as you can see here, I've got the Tech Power Up website up and showing the most important specs. Now, some things that you need to know, or at least I wanted to highlight, is the amount of cores. So the amount of cores has increased drastically. So I've got a separate sheet where I'll compare the cores of the previous gen with the 7900 XT, but um, just take note of the cores and there's a big increase in the amount of cores. Now, TMUs and ROPs, you don't need to worry about too much. The big thing here is 24 gigabytes of memory. So yes, there's that is a bump from 16 gigs. And again, you know, from a mining perspective, that really doesn't matter that much. Now, the big other thing here, as you can see, is GDDR6, not X. So from a power consumption and a heat management perspective, it's very good, but it is a little bit on the slow side. So I would have loved to see a little bit faster memory, but again, it comes at a cost of power and heat. Now, the other big thing here is the bus. So as you can see here, we've bumped up to 384 bit bus. Now, this bus width is very close to the 4090 and in effect it's the exact same thing so that's the big thing from a mining perspective now i just wanted to highlight some of the other important things at least as soon as i start comparing it in my excel sheet or my google sheet now if i scroll a little bit down the things that you would need to look out for here is the launch price so as you can see it's a thousand dollars it's still using pcie 4 so again nothing really has changed there the big difference here with the new 7900 XDX is the package here. It's a MCM, so it's a multi-chip module. So, um, you know, what you will find is there's actually more than one chip specifically here. And that's the big breakthrough on the AMD side. So similar to their CPUs, they are now doing chiplets. In the past or most other uh, GPU manufacturers, they use a monolithic die. And what that is, is just one big die. Um, what AMD has done here is, you know, if you're using multi chiplets, that potentially will bring down the cost because your chiplets are smaller and subsequently the yield is higher. So there's less chances of failures the smaller the chip are. So that's really what it comes down to. But again, you know, you don't need to worry about uh, those type of things. But that just shows you that, um, you know, from a cost perspective, you know, this is where the cost savings are going to come from. Now, some of the other things to take note here is the processing size. So AMD is making use of five nanometers here, which is not entirely true. There's multiple chiplets. So one of the other chiplets on the actual GPU is on six nanometer, but you know, that's splitting hairs at the end of the day. So the big thing is it's making use of five nanometers. So from a efficiency point of perspective, it's the same as the 4090. Now, if I scroll a little bit down, the other things that I wanted to talk about is the power. So as you can see here from a TDP perspective, it uses 355 watts. So it's about 50 watts up from the 6900 XT. So, uh, you know, it's not a massive jump, but it is a little bit more power. But from a power connector perspective, there is two 8 pins. So the specs that I'm looking at here specifically is the reference board or the founder's edition in the NVIDIA front. So it's the one that you will get specifically from AMD. Now, I do expect that we will see three pin connectors on some of the AIB models. And, you know, those are the board partners of AMD. So those are the likes of XFX or PowerColor um, or Sapphire. So I do expect them to provide a three pin connector and then potentially what you would see is the tdp of those gpus potentially will be higher so um, it's just something to look out for this is the reference card edition that we are looking specifically at now if i move a little bit over if you look at the clock speeds here so um, you know clock speeds is a little bit less than the 6900 xt which is um, quite interesting so um, but I don't see that as a massive problem. Now, the other thing that I wanted to highlight here is the theoretical performance or basically the compute performance. Um, I do think there's something wrong with tech power up statistics. Um, as far as I understand, this GPU is about 60 teraflops. And that's what I saw in the AMD presentation. So I do think there's a little bit of a, a mistake here, um, but that's sort of what we would see. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I jump onto comparisons and my mining performance estimates 
is the memory here. So here you can see this is where we've got the 384 bit bus, but most importantly is the actual bandwidth. So we've got 960 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth. So that's a massive jump compared to what we have in the past. And that's where we will see increases in the mining performance in general. Um, you know, for this specific card. Now, this memory bus is more important when we talk about memory focused algorithms, so stuff like Ergo, um, you know, or Ethereum Classic, but we would see at least some of this um, translate into the core heavy algorithms. Now, let's have a look at the comparisons. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've put a table for the 6800 XT, the 7900 XTX, the 3090 and 4090 and what i've put down here is the typical stuff that is important from a mining perspective the things that will matter when we talk gpu mining so as you can see here i've got the bus widths the cores the ram the bandwidth um, the teraflops memory types l2 cache now this is something that i do expect to play an impact uh, maybe not in 2022, but hopefully with mining software in the future, because I do think none of the mining software really make use of this L2 cache, which really is extra bandwidth that they could tap into. Um, and then importantly, the TDP. Now, the things that I wanted to highlight here, and specifically if you look at the 3090 compared to the 4090, right? They still got the same bus. Yes, they've got a lot more cores. So there's about 6,000 more cores. They have the same memory. But more importantly, the effective bandwidth increased from 300 and, ah, oh, sorry, 936 to 1 gigabit. So that's about a 7% increase. What you would also find here is the teraflop increase. So it went from 35 to 82. So there was a massive uh, teraflop increase between the 3090 and a 4090. Now, the other interesting thing, and that's why I do think that we will see mining software um, change slightly, is this L2 cache here. So on the 4090, NVIDIA is jumping on the um, cache bandwagon and gave their gpu a lot more cash now if you look at the mining performance and at least the differences between the 3090 and 4090 and this is rough estimates um you know i don't have a 3090 or a 4090 for that matter so i can't confirm all of these but you know this is videos that i've seen what people can achieve now if we look at um, etc which really is ethereum the jump really has been 120 mega ashes to 130 so uh, maybe a little bit more but it's not really a massive jump um, the same with ergo right so if i've got these two memory focused algorithms here it jumped up from 260 to about 290 and that increase is and that's why i've color coded it here directly translates to the bandwidth increase so you can see we saw about a seven percent bandwidth increase so that's sort of why these memory focus algorithms because they don't really use anything else um, we really saw lackluster increases in performance now where we saw bigger increases between the 4090 um, and the 3090 came with the core heavy algorithm so here you can see we saw um you know i've seen some streams or i was in some live streams with some of the other youtubers where they've pushed this 4090 to 150 souls on um flux and i've seen even 68 souls uh or mega ashes specifically for people uh, mining raven now if you look at this the big increase here that really drives um, the flux or raven type performance is really the compute performance but also on top of that the cores here so it's not directly translated because you know these algorithms work entirely different um, so it's not really directly related but you can see you know we saw about a 36 or a 40 percent you know between 30 and 40 percent increase between the 3090 and the 4090 so it wasn't that great on the memory side because there wasn't really a bandwidth increase um, you know or a significant bandwidth increase but that's really where we saw the differences now looking at the amd uh, increases here um, and what do i expect from the algorithms i think it's safe to assume at least from ethereum and ergo perspective looking at the memory bandwidth here and again we would see a big jump in the memory bandwidth and that relates to the bigger bus and slightly faster gddr6 i do expect us to see anything from um you know let's call it 115 to about 
125 mega hashes on the ethereum or etc uh, hash rates on the ergo side again same thing here if, if i just look at the bandwidth it's more than a 3090 and this is very sensitive to bandwidth so i do really think we will at least see around um a 270 here so uh, that's what i expect from a ergo perspective here now the big thing here if i just look at the increases on the amd side between the gpus obviously it's the big bus but it's the massive increase in the amount of cores now the amount of cores is great it's almost three times more but they did strip out some functionality or features within the core so it's not really the same course and that's where the x factor comes from so i'm not exactly sure what this will translate to but if i just look at the raw teraflop performance um again this is what amd initially showed in their slides so i do think that we will definitely see um you know core increases and i do expect there to be efficiency here but exactly what the number is this is the piece that i'm less sure of but you know just looking at the bandwidth and the teraflops here i do think we are able or we will be able to see 100 mega hashes on or 100 souls on the flux side now amd historically has been very efficient on raven and yoxa or the kapow algorithm and i do think that will continue but just looking at the sheer power here um i don't think they will touch a 4090 and the big reason for that is from a raw hash rate perspective the 4090 is just insane the amount of teraflops that it has um is just way way too much but I do think AMD is going to be super efficient on these core heavy algorithms. Now, uh, what do I think from a mega hash perspective? I don't know. I think at least we will see 50 um, to 55, specifically when we talk uh, Raven and Yox. And again, you know, these are guesstimates. Um, you know, I've got no idea what, what they will be, but i will definitely test them out so i can't really wait to get a 7900 xtx i do expect that card um you know to slot into my gaming computer i don't think i will be mining with it a lot besides testing um at least in the beginning and the big reason for that is you know even though it, the 7900 xtx is going to be massive gaming and mining improvements uh, you know purely from a efficiency and a profitability perspective i don't think even with the 7900 XTX, I am going to miraculously become profitable mining again. So, um, you know, I don't think it will make a difference in my profitability or at least me switching on. Um, you know, I would be ecstatic if I'm proven wrong, but I'm um, just looking at these increases. Uh, you know, it will be efficient, but I don't think it will uh, matter at my electricity rate. That's it for this one, guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify what you would like me to change in the comments. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.